and welcome to the Healthy Half Hour Podcast. We are your hosts, Richard and Karen Inslee. The Healthy Half Hour Podcast is your resource for all things healthy, and we will be discussing how to make nutrition, fitness, and lifestyle choices work for you. We will be sharing our own personal insights along with research gathered from working in the health and fitness industry for the past 10 years. Our show is brought to you by The 7 Day Shred, which can be found at 7dayshred.com. And please feel free to visit our podcast website, which can be found at healthyhalfhourpodcast.com. And now on to today's show. So we're back again. What have we been up to? Raining. Yeah. Well, we've not been raining, but it's just been... Raining. Raining and nothing but rain. Record, so. Record-breaking record rain in September. Yeah. We've never had this much rain since 1872. Really? Apparently. Oh. Oh. And that's, now why we've, everyth- that's why everything's wet. And now the garden's all done. We don't need the rain to grow the veggies. Well, there's, all... there's still things out there, but I'd, yeah. nice, I'd like to actually be able to go out there and get them rather than end up like in a big quag and knee-deep in mud. So Unfortunately, the cats go into the garden and bring the bigger quagmire of mud back into the house oh, with love them. I'd love to paddle that round. Mm-hmm. As, soon as, you, as soon as you mop up, they're straight back in with some more. It's never <laughs> yeah. ending. No, it's a gift that keeps giving. Yeah, exactly. As well as the dead mice that they keep giving us. <laughs> yeah, always gifts, eh? Always mm-hmm. gifts. So, so what are we talking about today then? We are going to talk about stop dieting, mm-hmm. which people listen to us and mean, what do you mean stop dieting? Because all you bang on about is weight loss and this and that and the other and body well, types. Well, we don't. Oh, I thought we did. <laughs> so, I mean, it may seem a little odd to say stop dieting, but more often than not, uh, if you think, is your dieting stopping you from losing weight? Because again, we kind of get a little bit uh, can get a little bit obsessed about weight loss, and we can just kind of go a little bit over the top with calorie tracking and standing on the scale every three minutes. So basically, today we are going to cover that subject. Really, it's just kind of have a little chat about it, and again, what we found over the years uh, being in the fitness industry, working with different people, and again, what works for different people. I know that um, I've mentioned this before, but going along with that stop dieting concept, I mean, yeah, if you've got a significant amount of weight to lose or metabolic condition, type 2 diabetes, there might be things that you've got to tweak with your diet. But I've mentioned this before. Dr. Ruscio um, is, does a podcast and he covers um, FODMAP and gut health. And, and one of the things that I've referenced that he's said before on his podcast is that you should fi- you should basically find the broadest amount of ingredients and foods that will keep you at your optimal um, weight and uh, ideal health levels. And there's no one diet that fits all. I know that we bang on about that all the time, definitely, because everybody's unique. Well, there's no one everything that fits all. This is the thing. And like you say, if your friend did this and you do it and then nothing happens. And again, we just wanted to kind of get across today that maybe what you're doing isn't helping you. So maybe just kind of relax things a little bit. And as we've said before, it's another stress and stress has physiological effects on the body and can uh, set you back. And one of the things with regard to stress, actually the way that, because we're going to deal with like mindset today and how we like think about what we're eating. But when you're actually eating a food, the, the stress that you feel and the pressure you put yourself under by eating that food, going like, oh my God, I shouldn't really be eating this. Like, oh my, this is so bad for me. That stress is actually worse for you physiologically than the actual food that you're eating. And I'm not saying like, yeah, eat the whole um, tub of ice cream, but a lot of the times it's how you mentally process and relate to eating that whole tub of ice cream. And and that's one of the things where you're going to gain the weight. It's actually your like um, stress levels and how you perceive what you're eating and uh, the stress that you put your body under. I don't know whether it was a, a Chinese proverb or something I heard somewhere. And I think the 
the gist was you're better off being relaxed about eating a uh, so-called bad food rather than being stressed and eating mm-hmm. a good food. So it's better for you to kind of have that half cookie or like you say, a couple of scoops of ice cream rather than sitting there chewing on an apple uh, wishing you hadn't. So again, it's there are physiological effects and things that can happen and also mental effects like Karen says from a from a mindset point of view denying yourself something sometime uh, can really not help with the overall plan and and again that's the thing i mean the keto thing is the big thing at the minute and people again karen's been keeps quoting things off uh, <laughs> some of her facebook groups to me in the daytime and again just people get so obsessed i mean there's one woman on talking about psyllium fiber the other day wasn't there yeah she says that if she adds psyllium fiber to um, all of her foods, then that is going to reduce her carb intake because she's increasing her fiber. So she's still eating the same amount of carbs, but she's eating more psyllium. So she thinks that's going to negate some of the carbs that she's eating. But it's just, I mean, <laughs> and that's actually leading into something which is called orthorexia. And we're going to do a podcast on that in a couple of weeks too, because it, again, that just seems to be something that's so prevalent now. And people just just get obsessed uh, about certain eating protocols, whether it's from, again, from a health point of view, weight loss point of view, whether they're animal kind of activists is the wrong word, but people, again, eat vegan and vegetarian for different reasons. And people get, again, it's we love to be in tribes. So if my tribe eats keto, then we're, we're right, everybody else is wrong. If my tribe eats vegan, we're right and everybody else is wrong. So again, there's different ways, again, that can kind of, get into that mindset with people that, oh, I've got to eat this and I've got to eat that. And really what we should be kind of looking at eat, is eating more kind of in, intuitively. There's a big word for the day. Yeah, so is also whatever it was. Orthodontist. <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> So we, um, yeah, so I mean, intuitive eating, really, I mean, what is that? Uh, It's pretty much what we do. We've got foods that kind of fall into line with kind of, again, the paleo kind of keto diet-esque, if you want to call it that. And we kind of eat those foods when we're hungry. We eat normal portions. We eat enough to sustain us. We don't overeat. Our neighbour... You overate cottage pie last night. I know, because it was lovely. (laughs) We went to our neighbours on the weekend and she had a fall supper and there was like 35 people there. She did all turkey and meatballs and salads and tons of things. And then right at the end, she says, oh, it's dessert time. So there was a a, a lemon meringue pie, one one gluten-free, one not. There was a... It was an apple crisp. An apple crisp, one gluten-free, one not. There was a pumpkin cheesecake. There was a homemade caramel sauce. We had some. Big deal. You know what I mean? It isn't... I actually had pumpkin... And enjoyed every mouthful. uh, Again, intuitively, yeah, big deal. But I overate on that night. And yeah, I came home. We were... I was absolutely stuffed. (laughs) And to be honest, I never ate until four o'clock on Sunday. I had a snack at four on Sunday and then we had supper about 6.30. Why? Because I intuitively didn't eat because I wasn't hungry and I'm just waiting for my body to say, yeah, okay, now with that large bolus of food that you stuffed inside yourself uh, Saturday night has now kind of dwindled and gone. Your energy started to drop a little bit. So now it's time to eat. Like I say, we, we enjoyed every mouthful of it and it was all whole food. She's like a great cook. She made everything from scratch and as um, Chris Cresser says, like no whole food diet ever made anybody sick and fat. If you're eating whole foods, which is what we do, and then like we have like some stuff. I mean, like if we go out, then in restaurants, you 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 still tend to like. Well, we tend to migrate to more whole foods, but then you know if you want to have like nachos or chips and dip, like spinach and artichoke dip. I mean, yeah, but it's not. With bread rolls. With bread rolls, yeah. And butter. You're out. Have fun. Enjoy. Don't, you know. But again, don't get up in the morning, even though you're probably, like I was on uh, Sunday morning, still stuffed, and then eat a load more stuff. Because again, from an intuitive point of view, why are you doing that? It's okay not to eat for for a while because again, it's, and my body weight stays, you know, similar uh, through week after week after week. And Again, if you are trying to lose weight, there's obviously some kind of caloric restriction going to be there at some point because obviously less has got to come in than what goes out. And again, we've spoke about this uh, ad nauseum on other podcasts. 
But just going back to that, me again on Sunday, listen to my body signals. Not hungry? Don't want to eat? Carry on. Do what you usually do. Drink lots of water. Rehydrate yourself again. And yeah, just again, do things, do listen to your body and listen to what your body tells you. And going along with that mindset, and again, I see it um, frequently. I mean, like, no, everybody knows that we don't have any, like, bias towards any diet. We just want people to eat whole foods. But a lot of the times, like, this, um, the keto uh, Facebook groups, you'll see people say, oh, I'm a newbie. I'm just starting it. Am I allowed to have this? And people go like, oh, no, you can't have that. Oh, that's cheating. Like, oh, um, I felt guilty. And it's like, this is all like negative talk. I mean, like, it's, it's almost like they're at school again. It's like, oh, you're not allowed to have that. Oh, you can't go over your carb count. You, you, the old, um, you're not following the right protocol. Like, that's not keto. And it's like, Seriously, like these are people who are embarking into a new protocol and like they're being made to feel guilty from the onset. And but on the other side as well, there's a lot of people join these like keto groups go, oh, I'm going to try keto. But they've not actually done any research into it. And I've asked people like, why do you want to do it? A friend of ours recently said he was uh, going keto. And um, I said to him, I says, why? And he went, um... Well, I want to lose some weight. <laughs> and it's just this hesitancy in the way that he actually, like, was, didn't really have an answer. And it just seems to be the, like, say, the buzzword right now, the, oh, everybody's going keto because it's going to, like, balance the economy and it's going to cure world peace. And, like, it's just almost like keto is going to fix everything. And it can fix a lot of metabolic issues. But I'd say that mindset, it's like um, we hate that term cheat meal because we've said this before, cheat, saying the word cheat is giving the impression you're doing something wrong. And especially when you're starting off, whether it's paleo, whether it's vegetarian, keto, whatever, like you don't want to put somebody in the wrong frame of mind and them to feel guilty. And like with cheating, if you're not on a diet, how can you cheat on it? You can't, like Karen says, I mean, cheating really, you can't really cheat on something because that's like doing someone a disservice or you're going behind somebody's back and I mean how do you go around the back of a diet but like you say if you're not on a diet how can you cheat on it and again some of the posts and people th- oh, I'm going to drop out of ketosis like somebody's going to drop a nuclear bomb on the house oh my like god it- drop out of ketosis for 20 minutes oh, really it's the, it's the <laughs> worst thing ever you know and like when we spoke to Ryan I mean it's not necessarily going to drop you out of ketosis doing certain things and I mean if ketosis is your goal and you, you're measuring with ketone meters and all the rest of the stuff and that's kind of where you want to put your focus then you know all power to you but it, it's not necessarily for everybody And with the keto diet, remember, it can help healing of the gut and also can help with hormone imbalances. But again, it's maybe something you shouldn't really be thinking of for life. And like people get obsessed with being in ketosis, and we've covered this before, saying just because you're in ketosis doesn't mean that you're burning fat, and you don't need to be in ketosis to like burn body fat either. So it's and that's one of the things. I mean, people go on a, a keto diet and then they say, oh, I'm not losing any weight. Well, shockingly, you're probably eating too much. Yeah. <laughs> so again, even though I'm in ketosis, I'm burning ketones, I'm using fat for fuel. But if you've got more fat coming in or more fuel coming in than what's going out, again, you're still not going to lose weight. That You're still going to be in that same position. It's just you're overeating on keto as we used to overeat on the standard American diet. So again, maybe look at those portion controls. And with often with new clients, I get them to use my fitness pal or something and do some calorie tracking and it's not something I, I would like people to do I mean some people love to do it and then they would it's just something they can incorporate but again if something that you kind of get obsessed about it you kind of need to take a step back I get people to do it just to have an idea of how much they are eating and also for that portion control again so people more often than not I mean you go down to Olive Garden and they give you a portion of pasta and everybody thinks that's how much pasta you should eat when Olive Garden are probably giving you three sizes the three is three times the amount they should because because pasta's cheap and it costs them 50 cents to make it up so i mean it's not the amount so just to kind of get that again your, your brain into gear of how much you actually should eat if you're not really listening to your signals or until those signals actually catch up with your new uh, new diet 
in an olive garden right now you drive past their restaurants and they've actually got a promotion on that says endless pasta bowl right now <laughs> and, uh, it's cheap yeah. it's just super cheap <laughs> it's I mean... cheap and you can eat a lot of pasta in a short amount of time and by the time it, the signals like get to your between your brain and your belly to say I'm full yeah you're almost at the point of exploding a bit like me with mashed potatoes similar yeah <laughs> You complain I ate too much last night. <laughs> so again, like I say, it's it's just kind of get out of that kind of diet mentality. And I mean, we've used the word diet in this podcast several times, but if you actually Google the word diet, it just says what you eat. I mean, a diet is whatever it is. I mean, if you ate Twinkies all day, that's your diet because that's all it does is it's a name for how you eat. So it's not necessarily a certain protocol or a certain thing. It's just eating food. And I actually got marked down in my uh, one of my home economics exams at school. I remember it clearly. And this is like obviously quite a few years ago. But one of the questions on our exam was like, um, what does diet mean? And like we all got it wrong because mm-hmm. we all assumed it meant weight loss. Yes. <laughs> and it doesn't. It's just no. weight, what you eat. I mean, it doesn't. it's just a name for whatever. Again, if you're on a certain protocol or you're just Whole eating whatever. Whole food diet, yeah, pretty pretty much diet, diet, diet vegetarian diet, diet yeah. paleo diet. You it's know. just, yeah, it's just a another word. <laughs> One thing, again, is um, self-sabotage. People, you know, they, they do well and then they see they're doing well and then all of a sudden they start to self-sabotage themselves, which again can be from dieting because, you know, is the diet working? Isn't it working? And then they may see a little bit of progress in the diet and then all of a sudden they, oh, I've got to eat all that cheesecake and now because I've, I've been restricting myself so long, I get myself a little bit of a reward. What does that reward? You kind of self-sabotage in your efforts and then people roll back again. So again, just changing that mindset of I'm not on a diet. I'm just eating intuitively. I eat what I want to eat. I eat when I want to eat. And again, going back to the six meals a day thing we've spoke about before, you don't have to eat six meals a day. I was talking with a client the other day and he was um, saying, oh yeah, I was telling my father-in-law you need to eat six times a day and blah, 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 blah. Well, he does because he's trying to put weight on. He's trying to build muscle. So to eat 3,000, 4,000 calories a day to build muscle, you need to eat six times a day. Because you can't literally put that much into three meals because you'd never be able to get it all in. So for the average Joe, if you want to eat once, twice, three times a day, then that's fine. Do what works for you. But again, don't get stuck into that, oh, I've got to eat small to keep your metabolism alive. Again, that just sends me <laughs> sends me nuts. But it's uh, again, there's no, there's no study on it. There's nothing out there that says eating six is better than eating four, eating three, eating two. So... Do what, again, intuitively eat when you're ready to eat. And I was um, listening to a podcast so a long time ago, Stephen Gundry did it, and it was on potassium magnesium. And like a lot of, um, we've got friends that are still in the bodybuilding field. And, you know, it's typical that you'll, you'll deplete and diet down and deprive yourself and just before you go on stage. And then you'll see all the photos afterwards. First thing that they do is like go out for pizza, ice cream, and then they gorge. And obviously a lot of people will gain back probably 10, 15 pounds literally almost overnight. But, um, Stephen Gundry was saying that one of the things that can happen when you've like depleted your body so drastically is that that big influx of carbs can actually throw your potassium magnesium levels off. And when your potassium levels like drop, that's when uh, your electrolytes can go through the floor and you can have like heart issues. And um, a lot of, well, we've always said before that bodybuilding is the most unhealthy sport on the planet, yeah, or one of them. And it, I mean, people can die as a result of it, either from the training or that metabolic and electrolyte um, fluctuation afterwards. And that's the big thing. People say, oh, yeah, the bodybuilder died because he was on steroids. It isn't that. But normally, that isn't the case. Normally, steroids are pretty inert and they're not too, not too unhealthy for you. Like Karen said, it's normally that dieting right down and then i'm using the inverted commas now to dry out as they call it so you can get your body fat super low so you can see all your muscles and that just really does have a lot of um stress on the heart and that's what they normally die from is heart failure purely because they're trying to get so lean and so skinny that again there's a reduction in uh, minerals to the body and yeah you just dehydrate yourself so badly and keep doing it over and over again and all the um diuretics they use again are just super unhealthy and 
again for it's it's not a healthy sport in itself but uh, people look at them and see all the muscle and everything and the girls are lean in bikinis and think that's an ideal way to look and uh, and again back into that mindset people kind of keep looking for that when really like karen said over and over and me too is just eat healthy eat oh. a whole food diet yeah. you may end up being a little heavier than what you want but you're better off being a little heavier and healthy rather than trying to be skinny as you can and struggle. Because, again, being um, skinny isn't necessarily good for you. Uh, and, again, you may need to hold that little bit of extra weight. It may be not the ideal look that you want, but just be satisfied that you're healthy and things are working like they should. And your body's very clever. It'll tell you what it needs. And if it's retaining, like, like three or four pounds, like it's, it's for a reason. So everybody has this magic number that they think of, and it's... Um, like, oh, I want to be 120 pounds. Like, why? Oh, because that seems like a really good number. <laughs> I don't know. People just seem to pick a number that... Well, you normally get it when they're 60. And I was 120 pounds when I was 18. That's a long time ago. Hmm. You probably had three kids, blah, 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 and everything else in between. And yeah, that's probably uh, not going to be... Your muscle mass changes, your metabolism changes, everything changes in those ensuing years. So again we get people coming with photos oh i want to look like i used to look like well that's that's long time you can't you'll never look like that i again. don't want to <laughs> no. or you'll get people I, I get emailed photos or give of somebody you know oh i want to look like this person well if you were born on the same day had the same genetics and the same parents you might stand a bit of a chance if you're the twin sister or twin brother but just be the best version of you and like we say with this, get out of that diet mindset. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And just try to eat, in, you know, intuitively and just kind of take it, you know, one step at a time with each meal and just see how your body feels and just, again, look at your energy. Look at, you say, if you feel lethargic and you're not feeling, you're feeling super hungry all the time, then just eat a little bit more. And going back to one keto group that I'm in, like where people are saying, oh, you're not allowed this, you're not allowed that. And, and this girl who was relatively new to it, she wanted to go out and she says like, oh, I really want to have a couple of glasses of wine. And I don't really comment in the group that often, but I just said to her, I says, go out, have the glasses of wine, two glasses of wine and enjoy every single sip and just like um embrace it for what it is i think she was going out for her birthday or something and she was almost asking permission and i just said just go out it's so sure it's going to be fun and it's a couple of glasses of wine like what what really is the big deal and she actually um said oh thank you you've made me feel better now because like you look in the group and as I said, you know, people are going, oh, you can't have this, you can't have that, that's not allowed, it's not keto, it's not, and it's like, oh, just give yourselves a break, but give other people a break as well. I mean, if it's whole foods, then <laughs> you, you can't go wrong. And also when we were out shopping the other day, I was walking around a store called Winners and uh, we were in the kitchen and food uh, section and I just put, I saw this bag on the shelf and it was coconut slices like dehydrated and on the packet it got keto approved and Ooh, <laughs> again permission yeah yeah and it's like okay you're allowed to have this because like it falls in line with keto and we did a podcast a few weeks ago about swapping one processed food for another but again it's like that that mindset and brainwashing people like oh you can have this because it's keto approved so this is okay uh, but obviously a packet next to it wasn't because it didn't have keto on it so i don't know it's like it's a great marketing tool but it's just like you say getting people in that wrong mindset but again pe people are like oh i'm gonna be on keto you know for the rest of my life and blah 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 and I'm, you know it's gonna be the best thing for me when it's just a tool in the toolbox and I mean, people have done long-term keto and they've done very well on it, but other people have tried it and sometimes they've ended up with health issues, again, especially from like carbohydrate point of view, especially with the females, and it can have effect on thyroid function and other things. So uh, if you want to be on a diet for a short amount of time, again, like we've said before, there's three sorts of diets. Maintenance, therapeutic, and... I've, I always say experimental. Oh, experimental, whichever one. But there's yeah. these three sorts of diets. So, again, you should really just be on 
that intuitive maintenance diet. If you're on a weight loss diet, yes, watch watch what you're eating uh, to a certain degree from caloric point of view. You can't eat what you want and expect to lose weight. If you're going to try keto, again, to see if it helps you lose some weight or just for a short amount of time, get on it. As soon as you've kind of done with it, get off it again. When you're introducing carbs back into your diet, if you've been on keto for a long time, then again, just watch that because again, a, a huge bolus influx of carbs is not necessarily good for the body, and a lot of that can be stored immediately. Unless because, you're Ryan. Unless you're Ryan, <laughs> because the body doesn't know what to do with it. So again, there's there's, there's certain protocols for coming in and out of these uh, whatever food uh, diet you're eating. But again, just for for general overall looking after yourself. I mean, just you know, eat what you want to eat, but obviously don't overeat on it and i mean if you ask your grandparents great grandparents i mean they never even knew what a calorie was they didn't know what fats proteins and carbs were they just ate intuitively they ate from the land whole foods and if you look back at pictures from 100 years ago the only people that were overweight really were, were like people that had a lot of money and they could eat a lot of food everybody else just ate enough to get by and really i mean that's where we kind of should be now and to be honest, the majority of people do overeat. And even though we think we don't, uh, just cut it back a little bit and kind of see how it works for you. But uh, when it comes to weight loss, really, you can't force it. I see it time and time again with people and they try to force weight loss. And really, again, you've got to get that healthy mindset and the healthy body and then weight will come off or you'll be able to lose it. But again, if you're going really hard trying to force weight loss, you're killing yourself in the gym, you're trying to starve yourself, What's going to happen in the end? So you do lose some weight and then all of a sudden your gym life slows down and then you start to eat more calories. You just put the weight back on. So again, if you kind of intuitively eat in and you're just uh, working out enough to kind of maintain the body type you've got, again, with that intuitive eating, you're not going to end up having to kill yourself to get there. And it's something that's sustainable for life, which again, something we've always kind of preached from the from the get go. I think we've probably thrashed this one to death a little bit now. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, so what we're going to look at next time, because I've actually got a little bit of a list, because I've been kind of thinking on what we should be doing with these podcasts. Yeah, we're going to actually planning. That's like a well, it's (laughs) sketchy. We're going to look at skinny utopia. Oh, see you then. That's all we have time for right now. But we do hope that you join us for our next show. And if you want to contribute to an upcoming show by suggesting a topic that you would like us to discuss in more detail, then hop over to our website, healthyhalfhourpodcast.com, subscribe to our podcast and submit your suggestions. The Healthy Half Hour Podcast was brought to you by The Seven Day Shred. And don't forget to share our details with your friends and review our show. Until next time, thanks for listening.